Good morning, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Maybe I think you need some time to adapt to my pronunciation and my accent. Uh, it's really great to see you this morning. Uh, even though we belong to uh, different uh, countries in the world, we are the fellow kingdom citizens, aren't we? Yeah. Actually, I was in the same boat as yours in the past, actually for 25 years. Four years in the Philippines and 21 years in Malaysia. Uh, actually, I have two sons. I wanted to call my first son King David, uh, a man whose heart is after God. Uh, do you know who the father of King David? Yeah, Jesse, right? That's my name. <laughs> yeah, you can call me Jesse always. Jesse Lee. Uh, I will explain myself in more details from now on, uh, once in a while. But this morning, what I'm going to share today is uh, how to uh, conform our lives to the will of God in the unique manner based on the text, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 5. Uh, have you ever heard the term time perspective? Time perspective. Uh, it means that the period of time we take into consideration when making day-to-day -day decisions and planning our own future. Probably the decisions you make considering one day or one week or one month or one year must be different from one another, I believe. Take a look at this proverb. Uh, wow, the answer is given already. <laughs> yeah, let he would be happy for a day, go to the barber, for a week, blank, for a month, buy a new horse, for a year, build a new house, for all his lifetime, blank. What expressions do you think will best fit in each blank. For a week, he would be happy for a week. What, what should he do? The answer is given. Marry a wife. <laughs> for a week, marry a wife. Welcome to the club. If anyone of you are crazy about getting married right now, please refer to this statement. How long? Not honeymoon, but honey week. Only one week. How about the last one? If you, if you would like to be happy for your lifetime, what is the answer? Be an honest person. I believe this means you have to live by universal principles and values. But my question to you right now, how about the eternal life? How about the eternity? If you would like to be enjoy, sorry, enjoying your life during your eternal life, what should you do? Probably the answer might be mind-boggling. Yeah, really different from other cases because some kind of supernatural time perspective should be considered. Life and death must be considered. Maybe in order to find this answer, maybe we can go to the Romans today, take a, take a quick look at uh, Romans uh, from chapter 1 and chapter 11. In short summary, we came into this world through our parents, but we came from God. If we honor our parents, but we ought to worship him more because he created us. That is the essence of the Bible. That's why it is the most serious sin to deny his existence and uh, ignore his presence in our lives. That is the most serious sin. If you do live in that way, you, you, will, you will live to serve other gods, actually. Our minds do not allow a vacuum. There must be something we worship. Probably money, power, position, or some kind of popularity will become our idols in our hearts, and we become they are slaves. However, there are other groups of people who say oh, they know the existence of God. They acknowledge 
God's presence and they are ready to worship, but still live in sin. How come? Because their hearts are elsewhere. It's only a reap service that they serve him. It means those who blatantly ignore God, the first group, and uh, those who worship him outwardly only, second group, are separated from God. This is the reality of us. Actually, they are separated from God. They cannot communicate with God, who is a source of life. Nor they can enjoy God's love and peace and uh, truth in their own lives. They are physically alive right now, but they are separated from God. At the end of their life, they're eternally separated from God. It was Jesus Christ, the God who already known all this situation, sent for us to be, sent for us Jesus Christ to be saved from this kind of spiritual predicament. That is God's grace. He came into this world as a human being just like us and died on the cross and raised from the dead on the third day in order to liberate us from this kind, this kind of spiritual predicament. All we have to do is to be united with him through faith in him. Just as he died, we, we ought to be dead to our selfish desires. Then we'll be resurrected as Jesus Christ was resurrected. At the moment we believe in Jesus Christ, actually, Holy Spirit comes into our lives. He leads us in accordance with God's will. Our responsibility is what? To make a moment-by-moment -moment decision to be united with, directed toward, or impelled by the Holy Spirit. That is the essence of chapter 1 to 8 in Romans. And uh, followed by special reference to the uh, redemptive plan of Israelites in chapter 9 to 11. Now we are chapter 12, therefore, therefore. What do you expect to read in the following verses? Now, probably some of you are reminded of Great Commission. Go, sorry, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations and baptizing them by the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. No. Rather, the Apostle Paul uh, asks us in this way, brothers, on the basis of God's mercies, I ask you to present your bodies living and holy sacrifice, which is your spiritual service of worship. Actually, that is the essence of today's message. Not great commission, even though it is very important to us believers, but the, the kind of great commission must be placed under the guidance of greatest commandment in the Bible. What is the greatest commandment in the Bible? When Jesus Christ was asked about this question by one of the teachers of the law, what is the, what is the great, great commandment in the Bible? What was Jesus' answer? Love your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. That is the great and the foremost commandment in our lives. I think uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 is some kind of Apostle Paul's version of greatest commandment. We should present our bodies a living and holy sacrifice in accordance with God's will. The problem, how can you do so? Let's take a look at the verse 2. Don't be conformed to this world, but be sorry. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. The key, we have to renew our own thoughts, right? What is the best way to renew our own thoughts in order to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ? Do you have any, any good idea? I think the clue is found in the first part of chapter, uh, first part of verse two, don't be conformed to this world. What is the opposite of the conformity to this world? Probably conformity to the world to come, 
conformity to the age to come. Do you know that when Jesus Christ came into the earth, new age started, new world started, which has already started is well on the way. Let me ask you another question, many questions I, I give you today. What is the first proclamation Jesus Christ made when he started off his public ministry? What was the first proclamation? Do you remember? The first thing he made, he uttered when he started off his public ministry. Oh, repent, right. Yeah, good choice, repent. But before that statement, he made another statement. Repent and believe the gospel of God. But before that time, he said, the time is fulfilled. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Time is fulfilled. Kingdom of God is at hand. And then repent. What do you mean by time is fulfilled? The time you have been looking forward to already started. The kingdom of God already started right now as I come into the earth. That is his point. That's why the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 24. Yeah, you already know this verse, right? Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believe him who sent me has eternal life right now in the present tense, right? Not future tense. Eternal life begins right now when we receive Jesus Christ. Does not come into judgment in the future. And has passed out of judgment into life again. We are in the life. We are in the eternal life right now. Not after our, our death. They probably we will enjoy again. But we already started our eternal life right now. That is the point. We are living in this age, but we are living in the other world already. We are living in some kind of overlap period of time. This age and age to come. This world and the world to come. That is our privilege. A second Corinthians said, we are Christ's ambassadors. Do you know who the ambassadors are? Yeah, they are representatives to uh, carry out some functions or missions of their own country, right? They are supposed to live temporarily in other country. They are not to leave their country forever, no. They live temporarily in that land and return to their own homeland after completing their own mission. But what if some ambassadors do not like to settle down in the land and even fall in love with the land. The problem right now we are facing in our own country and other countries, there are a generation of Christian ambassadors who like to live in this land and already have fallen, fallen in love with this world. That is the one of the greatest problems in our generation. We have to renew our own thoughts by the hope for the future. Rather, hope for the age to come or world to come. In that sense, we have to long for our own true country, which is in heaven. Do you know the C.S. Lewis, who is also of mere Christianity? He made a great statement. He said, I make it the object of my life to press on that country, my true own homeland, right? And help others to do the same. That is his life goal. Let me ask you, do you have the same goal? To press on to that country and help others to do the same. That should be our own goal. Let me, let me move to the second point. Live your life in order to conform your life to the will of God. What does it mean? In verse 3, God asks us to make some kind of sound judgment of ourselves based on the faith 
make a sound judgment based on your faith. Each one of us is really different from each other in terms of personality, character, or gift, or talents, or capabilities God endowed us. We are supposed to develop them and make the most of these talents and gifts and capabilities to the fullest for God's glory. We are different from each other. When I went to U.S. a few years ago, I had the privilege to visit uh, Maple Ridge Bruderhof community located in the state of New York. The Bruderhof community actually is one of the Anabaptist Christian communities where they do not hold their private properties and share everything with others. There was one Korean couple at the time, only one Korean couple who invited us. And they said to us like this, how incredibly wonderful it is to break free of the burden of making a living. We are in a privileged position to become the person God created us to be. We can do whatever we want in accordance with God's will. When I heard that statement, I was really envious of them. Wow, what a privilege it is. Free of making a living. Maybe any one of you have the same dream, right? <laughs> Be free of the making a living, free of money. But later, I came to realize, is this privilege given to this group of people only, through the community only? Don't we have the promises of God, like Matthew 6, 33? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and yeah, everything will be added to you. That is the promise of God. Nothing compares to this kind of promise of God, just as we sang together right now. We have the same promise. Not only the brutal community, but we have shared this promise with God. As long as we are sons and daughters of God. If then, how, what should we do? We can be free to develop ourselves and make the most of our gifts and talents and capabilities to the fullest for the glory. I hope you do. Let me ask you. What do you want to do? What do you like to do? If you don't have to worry about making a living, you check out and pray to God and ask his direction. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to develop your gifts and talents and capabilities fullest. Let me, I would like to share my own story, but uh, later, maybe we have short of time, <laughs> maybe we can share but this thing with the later. Yeah, my point, we do not need to be worried about our future, about making a living. Yeah, sorry to say, yeah, a lot of people have been suffering from a lot of trouble in the world. I already recognize that. That's why we are to pray for those brothers and sisters. But each one of us has the responsibility to be directed under God's guidance. Since God gave us special personality, gifts, talents, and capabilities, our responsibility is to develop them and make the most of them to the fullest. Let's move to the third point. Lend a helping hand to the body of Christ. In verse 5, we can find we belong to the church of God. The NASB says, we who are many are one body in Christ. Individually, members one of another. It means we belong to each other. Each, each one needs all the others. We belong to Gyeongsan Zhuang Church right now, right? As well as to some kind of universal or Catholic church. Do you know the term Catholic church in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in the Holy Spirit and Holy Catholic Church, right? Holy Catholic Church. What do you mean by that? All true believers of all times and all places, they are Holy Catholic Church, some kind of universal church, global church. 
when you mention church, we need to be reminded of this kind of dual dimension, universal dimension and local dimension. We have to think of these two dimensions when we make some contribution to the body of Christ. I know as foreigners, it's very difficult for you to take part in some activities in Gyeongsanjuang Church, I know. But at least you can do something. You can pray together with other believers. There are a lot of prayer requests that we need to make in terms of global level and in terms of local level. Yeah, why don't we commit ourselves to praying together with other church members? If you are available, maybe you can carry out other functions and other roles in the church, in Gyeongsanjuang or other churches or global level. My question, what kind of contribution can you make to the Holy Catholic Church or the Gyeongsan Zhuang Church, our church? We are joining right now as a member of the body. Lend a helping hand to the body of Christ, global level and local level as well. Yeah, let me wrap up my message. We are Christians. We are living in the, some kind of overlap period of time. We are enjoying the age to come, world to come already. We are in the eternal life because of the Jesus Christ. The sacrifice he made on the cross, resurrected on third day after he, his death. Because of that, we were in the privileged position to enjoy eternal life right now. But then how can we conform our lives to the will of God in accordance with the will? I already gave you some questions today, right? Let me review some of the questions again. The basic one is, what is the main object of my life? Could you check out? You can take stock of your life and then check out what is my goal? What is the goal of my life right now? In relation to this question, maybe I already gave you three areas, right? Long for your true, own, true home country. Second, leap your way. And third one, lend a helping hand to the body of Christ. Three errors, right? Three errors. Remember that. And the, another application uh, questions are, the first one, 